Nick, I'm going to need a summary of these papers for the Japan report by Close of Business today. Uh, there's like 500 pages here. Perfect, thanks. Knew I could count on you. We're going to need some help. Luckily, we can use Hugging Face Transformers for AI-based summarization. Let's do it. Tired of reading a ton of blog posts? Well, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can use AI to summarize long blog posts. So for this, we're going to be using Hugging Face and a number of natural language processing techniques. Let's take a deeper look as to what we're going to be going through. So in order to summarize our blog posts, we're going to be using a library called Transformers by a group called Hugging Face. And specifically, we're going to be using their summarization pipelines capability. So this allows you to pass through a block of text and have it summarized. Now, because there is a bit of a limit on that pipeline, what we need to do is a little bit of processing in order to be able to handle larger blog posts. But we'll go through that really, really easily. So in terms of what we're going to be covering in this video, we're going to be setting up Hugging Face Transformers. Then we're going to actually use Beautiful Soup to be able to scrape blog posts off the internet. So you don't need to copy and paste them. We'll be able to scrape them down and use them for our summarization. Then what we'll do is we'll chunk them into blocks of sentences and pass them to our summarizer in order to generate our summary. Then we'll be able to export this out to a text file so we can actually go on ahead and read it and use it wherever we need to. Let's take a look as to how this is all going to fit together. So first up, what we're going to be doing is installing Hugging Face Transformers. So this is going to give us a whole bunch of natural language processing capability. Then what we're going to do is we're going to scrape a blog post from the web using Beautiful Soup. And I think we might take a look at Hacker Noon and Towards Data Science, just as some examples. Then what we'll do is using that text that we've managed to grab, we'll chunk that into sentences and then pass it through to our summarization model in order to generate our summary. Then we'll push it out to a text file so we can play around with it and post it wherever we need to. Ready to do it? Let's get to it. Alrighty, so in order to summarize our blog post, we need to go through six key steps. So first up, what we need to do is install transformers and import a bunch of dependencies. Then what we're going to do is load our summarization pipeline. We're then going to go on ahead and get a blog post from Medium. So what we'll actually do is we'll use Beautiful Soup to actually pull down a blog post, pre-process that and allow us to actually pass that to our summarization pipeline. But before we actually get to that, what we're actually going to do is we're going to chunk our text into blocks. And the reason that we do this is because there is a limit as to how much text we can pass to our baseline summarization pipeline. There are other models that can handle a whole bunch of additional text. But the problem with some of these sometimes is that you need quite a fair bit of memory on your GPU a lot of which isn't actually very commercially viable for a lot of users. So what we're going to do is rather than having to go and spend thousands of bucks on a GPU, we're going to chunk up our text and summarize it in blocks. And then last but not least, we're going to output to our text file. So in order to do this, we're going to be using the Transformers pipeline. And specifically, we're going to be loading the summarization pipeline, which you can see over here. Now you can go through a really simple example and really just load that pipeline and then summarize like that. And it's quite quick, right? But in this case, what we're gonna do is build out a fully fleshed example. If you wanna see a quick run through, I'll include a link to a video that we did on short summarization somewhere above and in the description below. And as always, all the code for this video is gonna be available via GitHub. So if you wanna pick this up and just run with it really quickly, you can actually go to github.com forward slash Nick Knock Knack forward slash long form summarization, long form dash summarization dash with hugging face and you should be able to get this entire notebook available pretty easily. But as always, we're gonna go through this step by step and actually take a look at how it's done. Now also another thing to note, whilst we're doing this on blog posts, you could do this on a whole bunch of other different types of text if you wanted to. So if you wanted to summarize research papers or newspaper articles, you could definitely do that as well. Alrighty, on to step one. So first up, what we're going to do is install our core dependency, which is going to be transformers. So let's go ahead and do it. Alrighty, so that's our installation done. So in order to do that, what we've written is exclamation mark pip install transformers. So this is going to go on ahead and install the transformers library into our Python environment. So we've now got that available. Now the next thing that we need to do is actually go on ahead and import our dependency. So let's go on ahead and do that.
Alrighty, so we've gone and written three lines of code there to import our dependencies. Now the first line is importing transformers. So what we've written is from transformers import pipeline. And the pipeline is going to allow us to import our summarization model really easily. Then the second line that we've written is from BS4 import beautiful soup. So beautiful soup is a library that allows us to easily perform web scraping. So the reason that we're importing beautiful soup is that we're actually going to go on ahead and programmatically grab a blog post from the web, bring it down and then actually work with it in Python. So we don't need to do any copying and pasting. We're just going to be able to scrape it. And the last library that we've imported is requests. So in order to do that, we've written import requests and requests allows us to make HTTP calls out to the web. So this is going to allow us to call out to our blog post and bring back the results. And then what we'll do is we'll pass those results to beautiful soup in order to extract the text for that blog post. And that's pretty much step zero done. So the next step that we need to go through is actually go on ahead and load our summarization pipeline. So step number one here. So let's go on ahead and do it. Alrighty, so that's our summarization pipeline brought down and imported into our notebook. Now, if you are doing this for the first time, it will download the model behind that summarization pipeline. So it may take a little bit longer, but you don't need to do anything else apart from writing that line. So let's take a look at the line that we actually wrote. So what we've done is we've created a new variable called summarizer to hold our pipeline. And in order to set it up, what we've written is pipeline. And then to that, we've passed a parameter called summarization. The cool thing about the hugging face transformers pipeline is that you can actually do a whole heap of really advanced and sophisticated natural processing tasks just by importing the default pipeline. And the cool thing about this as well is that you can actually import a whole bunch of different models. So say for example, I wanted to import the T5 base model or even like a huge T5 11 billion model. You could do that really easily. Now this model here, I did test this out. This is 45 gigabytes and you'd need a ton of VRAM in order to be able to load this into your GPU. But fret not, we're not gonna be using that model today. We're gonna to be using one that's readily available and quite easy to use. But back to our notebook. So the next thing that we're going to do, so this is step one now done. The next thing that we need to do is actually go on ahead and get a blog post. So I've got a couple of links that we'll try out and we'll, we'll sort of work with those and go from there. So first up, what we're going to do is we're going to create a blank variable called URL. And in that, we're going to paste in a link to a blog post that we want to summarize. So the one that I found that I wanted to take a look at was this Hacker Noon article here. So, and this is all to do with uh, the GameStop short squeeze. So I thought this is particularly relevant, but if you wanted to, you could paste in a different link and we'll actually try a bunch of others as well. Uh, but let's start with this for now and go with that. So again, the link will be available in the description below as well. So if you wanna try it out, you'll have that link. So we'll copy in this link. And what we're going to do is just paste that into our URL. So again, if you wanted to do this with different articles or with different blog posts, all you need to do once we've finished writing the code is just change this URL and you'll be able to do exactly that. Now, what we want to do is actually start setting up our request and actually start processing and scraping our data. Okay, so that's our request done. So before I show you what's sort of been returned, so the line that we've written is requests.get URL. And this is basically going out to this URL that you can see here, and it's going and grabbing the entire web page. So I'm talking all the HTML, all the metadata, all the text, everything that's on that page is now going to be inside of this variable R. So if we actually take a look at R, you'll actually see that it's a whole bunch of HTML. So when we actually just output R, it's going to give us our response and 200 means it's been successful. And if we type in text, this is actually going to show us all of the stuff that's in that web page. Now you can see here that there's a, there's a whole bunch of stuff, right? So it's not all that usable right now, but this is where beautiful soup comes in because we can actually use beautiful soup to actually go through all of this text and actually pull out the specific tags that we want. Now in this case, in order to get the data out of this blog post, what we actually want is we want the title. So in this case, if I inspect that little section there, you can see that these are all uh, divs on the inside of paragraphs. So really we're going to be wanting to extract all of this stuff. So again, we're inside of a paragraph. So what we're actually going to do is I've seen in a couple of other medium blog posts or medium based blogs 
that they also have H1 tags. So basically titles or subtitles. So what we're actually gonna do with our beautiful soup web scraping code is we're actually gonna extract all the paragraphs and all the H1 tags. But we'll take a look at how to do that now. So now that we've got our text, we're sort of good to go for our scraping. So let's go on ahead and write our code to extract our blog post out of that. Okay, and that, that's really it for Beautiful Soup. So it's actually gone through, it's passed our HTML and it should ideally have all the results that we need. We might need to do a little bit of additional pre-processing to string it into one big block of text, but we'll take a look at that in a second. So if we actually take a look at our results value, results with an S, you can see that we've now gone and extracted a whole bunch of text. And if you take a look closely, what you'll see is that we've extracted our H1 tag which is extracting our title. So will GameStop with GameStop, or the GameStop with GameStop, or is this just the beginning? So if we actually go and take a look, that's this title here. So will the GameStop with GameStop, or is this just the beginning? And if we actually scroll down, we're actually grabbing the rest of this text. So if we take a look at our first paragraph, the GameStop squeeze on short sellers is an extraordinary event. And if we go back to our text, the GameStop squeeze on short sellers is an extraordinary event in market. So you can see that we've started to extract our text. Now, what we actually want is we actually want to extract just the text out of this. So we don't want any of these P tags or H1 tags, and we want it to be in one big block of text in order to pass it to our summarizer. So we're going to do that next, but let's take a look at the code that we actually wrote to get to this state. So in order to do this, we've written two pieces of code. So the first line that we've written is we're creating a new instance of beautiful soup. So by writing beautiful soup, and then to that, we're passing through two parameters. So we're passing the text that we extracted over here. So uh, dot text, And then the second parameter is indicating that we want to use the HTML parser. So to do that, we've written HTML.parser. Then we've stored that or stored that object in a variable called soup. So if we actually take a look at soup, you can see that that's holding all of our stuff in there. So basically this transforms it into a format that we're able to use our search across. Then the next step is where we actually go on ahead and perform our search. So really what we're doing when we're actually going on ahead and performing web scraping is we're just making a request to a web page, we're putting it into a format that we can search, and then we're searching for the specific tags or the specific patterns that we want within that block of text. So in order to search for that pattern, really what we've identified is that we need our H1 tag and our P tags, which effectively our H tags represent our titles and subtitles, and our P tags represent our block of text. So in order to search through and find those patterns, we've written soup, so this object over here, dot find all, and then inside of square brackets, we've passed through the two tags that we wanna look for, so H1 and P. And then we've stored those results in a variable called results, which again is giving us this big block over here. Now the next thing that we wanna do is concatenate this into one big block of text, rather than having to go through each one of these values in an array. Because right now this is just a regular array and you can see that they're all individual lines. So let's go on ahead and concatenate this into one block of text. Alrighty, so that is our article now ready for pre-processing. So what we've actually done here is written two lines of code. So the first line is looping through each result in our results array, which we remember we had from our find. And then the second one is just joining each one of those results together. So remember that we had all of those tags. So those results, we actually take a look. We had all of those H1 tags and P tags. This first line is really just pre-processing our array and getting rid of all of those. So ideally if we stop it or if we take a look at text, you can see that that's gotten rid of all of our P tags and our H1 tags. And in order to do that, we've written for result in results, extract just result.txt. And again, we've stored this inside of an array using a list comprehension. So this is now stored in a new variable called text. Then the second line that we've written is really just appending all of these together. So it's going through each value in this array and it's joining it to a blank string. So ideally, when we take a look at article now, we've just got one big block of text here which is exactly what we want. So in order to do that, we've created a blank string. So you can see I've got some quotes there with a space in it, dot join, and then text. 
So this is going to loop through each value inside of our text array, and it's gonna join it into one big string. And we've stored all of that inside of a variable called article, which you can see here. Now, the next thing that we wanna go on ahead and do is start chunking up our text. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna chunk it into blocks of sentences. And the reason, again, that we're doing this is because there is a limit as to how much text you can pass to our summarize or our baseline summarization pipeline at any point in time. Now you can get around this if you're willing to use one of the larger models, but sometimes that's not technically feasible with the amount of VRAM you've got on a GPU. So we're gonna do it the other way and chunk it up and work from that. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to now split up this article into individual sentences. And the reason that we're going to do this is because when we actually go and chunk it up, we're going to split based on sentence. So in order to do this, we first want to replace all of our full stops, exclamation marks, and question marks with a end of sentence tag. So this is just going to make it a little bit easier when it comes to pre-processing because we'll still have full stops when we generate our summarization. So let's go on ahead and do that. Okay, so that's our blog post now broken up into sentences. So if we actually now take a look at that, you can see that we've now got individual sentences inside of our sentences array. So if we take a look at sentences zero, we've got one sentence, sentences two gives us another sentence, and you can see that we've still got our full stop and a little bit of punctuation. So in order to do this, we've done a couple of key things. So first up, what we've gone and done is we've replaced our full stops, exclamation marks, and question marks, and we've gone and replaced them with the exact same punctuation symbol and the end of sentence tag. So the reason that we're doing this is when we go and split up this big block of text into sentences, we want to split based on this EOS tag rather than the punctuation tag, because otherwise it's going to get rid of our punctuation tag. So when we actually go and perform our summarization, it's going to look a little bit weird without that punctuation. So rather than splitting based on the individual punctuation tag, so full stop, exclamation mark, and a question mark, we're going and appending EOS to each of those punctuation statements. So exclamation mark becomes exclamation mark EOS, question mark becomes question mark EOS, full stop becomes full stop EOS. And in order to do that, we've gone and written article dot replace. And this is just replacing that particular bit within a string with our new string. So in this case, it's replacing our full stop with full stop dot EOS, exclamation mark with exclamation mark EOS and question mark with question mark EOS. And so we've done this three times for each individual punctuation symbol. And again, we've stored the results back inside of our article variable. Then what we've gone and done is we've gone and split out our article into sentences. So to do that, we've written article dot split and we've split by our EOS tag. So now if you take a look at our sentences array, which is what we've actually stored that result into. So article dot split EOS is now stored inside of an array called sentences. So if we take a look at that, you can see that we've got all of our individual sentences there, which easily allows us to now work with it. Alrighty, so the next thing that we actually now want to do is actually start chunking up our blocks of text. So what we want to do is we want to limit the chunks that we send to our summarizer to no more than 500 words. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to loop through each one of these sentences and basically have a running count as to whether or not that particular chunk is less than or greater than 500 words. So let's go on ahead and write this block of text and then I'll take a step back and walk you through it. Alrighty, so that's our chunking text now done. So let's take a step back and take a look at what we actually wrote there. So first up, what we're doing is we're looping through each one of our sentences. And in order to do that, written for sentence in sentences. 
then the next line is actually doing a check to see whether or not we have a current chunk. So if we don't have a current chunk, then we default and go to this line here. If we do, then we go on ahead and execute this. So the reason that we do this is if we don't have a current chunk, then what we're going to do is append to that array. So we'll effectively take our sentences, split it by a space and then append it to our chunk. So this is effectively taking our entire sentence and then splitting it out into its individual words. If we actually go and run this, what we'll actually see is that we'll have within our chunks, we've just got the individual words. So let's actually run this first. And it looks like we've got, let's just double check. Uh, we haven't spelt sentences right up here. So if we actually take a look at our chunks, you can see that we've actually got them broken out into their individual words. So if we take a look at chunk zero, we've got a whole bunch of individual words, but that's fine. We're going to append those back together. And the reason that we do it by words to begin with is because it makes it a little bit easier to do the running count and to make sure that we're below our 500 word limit. Okay, so assuming we don't have a current chunk, then effectively what happens is we default to this block of code here and we go on ahead and split our sentence for our current sentence into its individual words. So we append it to that. Now, assuming that we do have a current chunk, which is what this particular line is doing. So we're actually checking if the length of chunks is equal to the current chunk plus one because we're, our counter is starting from one. Then what we're doing is we're checking if the current chunk plus the current sentence, so the length of the current sentence, if we append those together, if that is less than our maximum chunk length, which is 500 words, then what we're going to do is we're going to go on ahead and extend the current array with the current sentence. So this line here is effectively getting our current chunk and it's grabbing our sentence, splitting it up into its words using sentence.split and our spaced split. And it's effectively using the extend function to be able to extend that existing array. So this allows us to take a bunch of sentences and append it to the current chunk, effectively bunching it out and chunking it up. Then the next line that we've written is effectively running if our current chunk plus our current sentence is greater than 500 words, then we're gonna go on ahead and create a new chunk. So current chunk is incremented by one, and then we're effectively running the same line that we had down here. Now, what we've got is a bunch of words inside of our chunks array. So we actually wanna append these back to their component sentences. So let's go on ahead and do that. Alrighty, so that's our chunking done. So we did quite a fair bit in here and here, but the next block of code that we effectively wrote is going through each one of our chunks and it's joining it together using the join method. So what we're doing is we're first up looping through each one of our chunks. So in order to do that, we've written for chunk underscore ID in range len chunks. So this is effectively getting how long our chunks array is, and then we're getting an index then what we're doing is we're getting the current chunk, so chunks, and then we're passing through the current index, so it's just looping through, and we're joining it together in one big string. So we've created a blank string, dot join, and then we're going through our chunks array. And we're replacing the existing array, so chunks, chunk ID, now equals that joined together value, which effectively gives us this. So you can see now that this is one chunk that we're then going to pass to our summarization pipeline. So if we take a look at another value, you can see that again, we've got another chunk of text, ideally, which should be less than 500. So if we actually take a look at the length of that, you can see, oh, this is based on character. So if we split by word, you can see 478. So if we take a look at the first chunk, that's 493. So they're all below 500 words. So we've now successfully gone and grabbed this big blog post and we've now chunked it up into blocks of 500 words. Now, the next thing that we need to do is effectively start summarizing our text. So it's all downhill from here. So let's go on ahead and do it. Alrighty, so that's our summarization done. So in order to do that, we've written one line of code. So specifically what we've gone and done is we've gone and grabbed our summarizer, which we imported right up here. So this is our summarization pipeline. 
Then what we've gone and done is we've passed through a number of arguments and keyword arguments. So specifically the first thing that we've gone and passed to it is our chunks. And remember our chunks is really our big sentence blocks. And then to that, we've gone and passed a number of keyword parameters. So the first keyword parameter that we've passed through is max underscore length. And this is the maximum number of words we want for our summary. So in this case, we're gonna be capped to 120 words. Then the second keyword parameter that we've passed through is min underscore length. And again, this is the minimum number of words that we want for our summary. And then we've passed through whether or not we want to sample. And in this case, we've set it to false. Then what we've done is we've stored our result inside of a variable called res. So if we actually take a look at that now, we've now got a whole bunch of different summaries. Now, what we've actually got is we've got our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven individual summaries, because what we're actually doing is we're actually creating a summary for each one of our chunks that we've got available. So if you take a look, we've actually got eight chunks. And if we take a look at the result that we've got, we've got eight summaries. I obviously miscounted that. So what might actually be useful now though is to append all of these together. So if you actually take a look, what it's actually doing is it's extracting each one of the core sentences from each one of our chunks. So if we take a look at the first one inside of this block here, so the GameStop squeeze on short sellers is an extraordinary event in markets where at face value retail traders and investors have worked together in an attempt to put some of the largest Wall Street institutions out of business. That in and of itself is actually quite a good summary of what's actually happening with the short squeeze. Now what we can do is we can actually do a little bit of additional pre-processing and combine this all together into one short sentence summary. So let's go on ahead and do that. Alrighty, so that's our summary now in one single block of text. So you can see here that what we're getting back is the short squeeze and short sellers, again, the same sentence, but this has basically generated a summary for us. So rather than having to go through, read the entire blog article, we've now got a nice concise summary. Now, if we wanted to, we could make this even shorter. So rather than leaving through our max length as 120, we could actually set this to, let's say for example, 80. We can then run this again, and again, it's gonna take a little bit of time to perform the summarization, but ideally what you should see is that once we run this, we get shorter sentence blocks. All right, so that's our summarizer rerun. So remember what we did just there is we changed our maximum length to 80. So this means our summary for each chunk of text is gonna be limited to 80 words. So if we take a look now, you can see that we've already got a shorter summary. And if we go and run our appending code, this is generating a shorter summary there. I don't know how much shorter that is, but again, you can play around with this. You can make it a lot shorter if you wanted to. Alrighty, so in order to perform this summarization, what we've actually gone and done is we've looped through each summary inside of this results array. And what we're actually doing is we're then going and extracting the summary text because it's actually stored inside of an object. So if we actually take a look at our results array and we grab one value, you can see that what we're actually getting back is an object. So if we actually type in type, you can see that it's actually a dictionary. Now, if we wanted to actually go on ahead and grab a value out of this, what we can do is we can access that key. So if we type in summary, if we actually take a look at our keys first up, you can see that we've just got one key, which is summary text. So if we actually use that summary text key, then we can access that value. So let's do that. And you can see by doing that, we've gone and accessed the text from within that. So what we're effectively doing down here is we're looping through each one of the values inside of that results array. And we're effectively doing this up here, but because we've got our individual summary stored in a temporary variable called sum. So when we're looping through, we're going for sum in res. So basically for summary in our results, we're then going and accessing or using that sum variable and accessing its key using summary underscore text. And we're then using the join method to join them all together, exactly as we did a bunch of times with our chunks. So this effectively gives us one summary that we can then go and output. And then this brings us to our fifth or sixth and final step, outputting this summary to a text file. So let's go on ahead and output it now. Alrighty, that is our text now output. So if we actually take a look at what we wrote there, basically 
we took this same line of text that we used to concatenate it all together and we stored it inside of a variable called text. And then we just used some standard Python with statements and write statements to be able to write this out. So what we've then written is with open blog summary, or this should be .txt. So with open blog summary .txt, and then we've passed through the write flag as F. So this means we're going to be able to work with our file as F. We've then written F dot write text. So this is effectively creating a new file called blog summary .txt, and it's writing out our text that we just summarized up here. So if we now actually take a look at the folder that we're working in, you can see that we've actually got two files. So this is the one that we screwed up because we wrote .tx rather than .txt. And then we've got our proper summary, which you can see is now available in a text file. So this obviously shows you how to do it for one blog post, but that about wraps it up in terms of how to actually take a blog post, chunk it up and then summarize it. Now, again, if you wanted to, you could actually do this on a different blog post. So all you need to do is go on ahead and replace this URL here. So let's actually try that now. So if we go to Hacker Noon, which happens to be one of my favorite sites, let's go on ahead and grab another blog post. So say for example, uh, I don't know, Docker, I'm kind of boring. So say for example, um, let's actually do this one. So will institutional investment keep pouring into Bitcoin? So I've just clicked the link and what we're going to do is copy this link, replace this URL here that we set up originally in step two, and we're just going to run through the code again. So if we hit enter again, this is going to get our or run our request, return our text, which you can see there. We're then going to perform our or create our soup and perform our search for our H1 tags and our paragraph tags. And you can see it's gone and grabbed our text. Then what we're going to do is chunk it up again. And then we can run our summary. So remember, if we now take a look at our chunks, We've now got our Bitcoin article now chunked up. So again, this one looks like it's a little bit shorter than the short squeeze article, but that's cool. We can run through that. So if we now go and run our summarizer, we've now gone and summarized that blog post. So you can see this one's actually summarized quite a fair bit. So if we take a look here, so when was the last time you heard of a decent crypto project? I mean, a real one, which doesn't promise mountains of gold, great systems doing everything and unrealistic ETAs. So you've got a bit of a summary of this blog post here. But again, you can see that really quickly we're able to generate these summaries. And if we, again, if we output this out, so we might call this one Bitcoin summary. And if we now go and take a look, we've now got our Bitcoin summary now output. Now, if you wanted to, you could actually build this as part of a pipeline for yourself and set up a number of URLs so that overnight or as you wake up in the morning, you've actually got a whole bunch of summaries that you can then go and read through to maximize productivity. But that about wraps it up. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and tick that bell so you get notified of when I'm releasing future videos. And let me know what types of blog posts you went about summarizing. Thanks again for tuning in. Peace.